Recently, I released a video about my Pro Tools 5.1 and 2.0 mix down template, and a bunch of you asked if I could do the same for DaVinci Resolve. So let's go through it today. DaVinci Resolve has its limitations, so this isn't a one-for-one -one with my Pro Tools template, but I've got it as close as I can. If you purchase this template from me, you'll get free updates as DaVinci Resolve is updated and I can make it more like my Pro Tools template. So I'm going to take you through the template. You can see here our tracks on our index. Uh, and so we've got uh, DX channels, we've got ADR channels, we've got effects channels, we've got stereo effects channels, Foley, ambience, there's stereo ambience, there's 5.1 ambience, and then we've got MX channels. And these are all just stereo at the moment. And you can either put your stems in there or just stereo tracks. The one great thing about DaVinci Resolve that Pro Tools doesn't do is you can just right click on a track and you can change your track type here. So if you decide that you don't want as many mono tracks or you want to convert this to a stereo track because you don't need 5.1 ambiences, you can just go in and change that accordingly. The index here is great for selecting lots of tracks. Uh, you can rename them on here, you can change the color, you can hide them and show them, you can lock them, which is great. And it also tells you what type of channel it is here. So you can see here on the channels, uh, obviously this is my timeline. Uh, you've got metering, you can hide and show these things however you want. If you've got multiple monitors, you can obviously um, put the mixer on the separate monitor, but for the sake of showing you this, I've got it all on the one, crammed on the one window. So again, you can hide your, your uh, index there. And index is great because you can also do markers and stuff. So you can set up your scenes or you can spot your session and put in different color coded markers for or even your editor can do that if he's editing the film and then gives you those markers, you can import those markers into here as well. So you can see here, we've got our sends for each. Uh, there's our dialogue, uh, there's our effects stem. So these are just reverbs that get sent here. So as I showed you before, you can actually change these channels easily by uh, just clicking here and you can change that to a stereo channel. You want to make sure that it's mono if you're using mono. You don't want it to be uh, stereo at any time unless you're using stereo sound effects or recordings. You want to keep that mono, uh, otherwise you'll have things panning on the left side and all that sort of stuff. So the one downside about DaVinci Resolve is currently, and I'm hoping they'll update this soon, you can't pan buses. So here I've got uh, monos. You can see if we go on the side here, there is... Uh, a mono reverb or two mono reverbs, two stereo reverbs, and then I've got a 5.1 reverb on E. And that's the same for each uh, one except for MX. So the music reverbs, I've got two stereo and two 5.1. Uh, and you can add to these, uh, but at the moment you can't pan. So we can't have one stereo send at the front and one stereo send at the rears and use just stereo reverbs like I like to do in Pro Tools. You have to pretty much use a 5.1 if you want to get uh, surround sound reverbs. But the awesome thing about DaVinci Resolve, so if we come up here to our bus format, here's all our buses. And obviously there's the colors and shows you the channels and the names and we can change the names however you want. But the great thing is we can change this after the fact. So if you want to make it, or if you have 5.1 or surround sound uh, reverbs, you can make four of these surround sound and one mono, you can actually just go through and change these to whatever suits you. So the good thing with DaVinci Resolve is we're not kind of bound by at least channel types where with Pro Tools, once you've made the track and chosen what kind of track it is, you're done. You can't undo that. So you can see after our reverbs here, we have our uh, buses or our stems and they get broken out. So we've got each stem as well as an M&E and then there's our master 5.1. Then there is our stereos and our stereo master and then our web boosted one. So these are meant for your normal masters meant to be broadcast minus 24 or if you're doing Netflix, I think there's minus 27 uh, dial norm. And then you've got a web version, which is like a minus 18 LUFS boosted. So I've actually got, you can see on the end here, there's limiters on some of these or there's limiters actually on all of these, but I'll show you. So there's a limiter plugin on these and then this one's got um, a little bit of compression and then the limiter after that. You can see here on these um, buses that on these ones there's no blue line, but see how there's that blue line. If you double tap that, you can see I've activated the limiter here. And so this is just a zeroed out limiter um, and that just stops it from 
clipping on the way out when you're exporting your stems. And then we've got one that's brought down to minus uh, 3.4 uh, here as a ceiling. So that stops you from getting any clipping. And uh, you can see here I've routed all the different uh, setups. So all the stems go to where they need to go. Uh, and then, yeah, you've got your reverbs here, which at the moment, all the reverbs are empty. So you can populate that yourself by just adding your reverbs in here. A couple of things to note is to be able to listen to what you want to listen to, you need to make sure up here you have your either 5.1 master, or if you want to listen to the stereo version, you pick which bus you want to be listening to, but you'll want it to be either one of those two. Uh, and then you can have main and near. And what we can do to change those, if we go to preferences and you go to video and audio, here I've got, this is my tone winner at the moment, and I've got it set to 7.1, which it'll scale up or down to, depending on what you've got. But if you want to, you can just go 5.1 and then you go main and you set up each channel. So that's your channel of your output of your audio interface. Then you can go to near and you've got stereo and we could, it's unassigned at the moment, but you could set that up as your headphone channels uh, there. So at the moment I'm 7.1, but now it's unassigned. So you can just click through and change that, but I won't fix that right now. Unlike Pro Tools, you can't use a bus for the LFE, which I love to do because it makes it easier to send content to your LFE and then back to your uh, buses or your stems, but you can't do that in DaVinci Resolve. So you go to your panner and you'll see here, boom, and that is your LFE channel. So you can turn it on or off. You can have it pre or post and you just ride this uh, straight up as your fader. Uh, and if you've got the controller, you can obviously control that uh, with the controller. Uh, unfortunately, that's is all you can do. And we can't then put a low air or anything like that onto the bus. But in time, they will, uh, I'm sure they will add things like panning and being able to assign stuff like that, like I can in Pro Tools. And when they do do that, as I said before, I will update this template. And if you purchase the template from me, you can get that for free. Uh, that free update. One thing I'd recommend when working in DaVinci Resolve is as much as you can use the internal plugins that come with it. So whether it's using Dynamics or even the EQ, maybe if it's just for some basic correction or for roll-offs, you know, to do a base roll-off because it will help it run smoother. And then, you know, as you need them, add your plugins here. One thing to note, sometimes the plugins here get categorized a bit weird. Uh, it's automated by DaVinci. So if you want to fix that, just go to preferences, your audio plugins, and here's all the plugins. The ones with the ticks are the ones that actually loaded in. It'll say there if it's loaded successfully or not, and you can change the category here. So you can put them into categories that make sense to you. It's really easy to import this template. You just need to go file, import, timeline, and then you just select the file that you've purchased from me. You can also use timeline to import AAFs, or if someone's been editing in DaVinci Resolve, you can literally just copy their content and you can paste it into your template here. The last thing I need to talk to you about is how you export your files when you're finished your production. So you want to get to your production. Let's just say we got our in and out points. Uh, I've just chucked in a file here for the sake of it uh, working. And so what you want to do is we're going to just go custom export. You're going to call your film, whatever it is. You're going to put the location you want to export it. We're going to go single clip so it does the whole thing in one clip and you want to make sure that you have video turned off unless you want to make just an export a quick video export that they can review uh, you can keep that on you know you might want to set up uh, your own template or just use say like the youtube export that is up here as like a base to start with you want to make sure when you do that though is that you only have your one output track and it's either your 5.1 or stereo depending on what they're reviewing but in our case, we want to export all the masters and stems. So we're going to turn the video off and we're going to go audio only. And please note that you, this will happen a lot. So it'll default to say QuickTime or MP4. MP4. So you want to make sure you select wave and you want to go PCM. Make sure your sample rate and bit rate, make sure your sample rate and bit depth is correct. And if you need to do say a DCP and they need mono uh, discrete mono channels. So it'd be left, center, right, all the separate files. You can click that, but if you just want to give them a 5.1 WAV file and then the stereo WAV file, you don't want that clicked. We want to render as discrete audio tracks. So all these outputs will be separate WAV files. 
So here we've got them. They're not in order, so I don't know why it's picked this order. But you just want to make sure they're all there. So your 5.1 stems, your 2.0 stems, your masters as well. And uh, once you've selected your in and out point, so I and O on here, so there's your full production, you'll be able to add to render queue and then it will add it here and you can export it. You can see here I've got some of my old videos and stuff. But once that's done, you can click render. And then you can go back and just re-render that anytime you want. Uh, and that will be, it'll override them. The one thing to note that the files aren't like Pro Tools where they will name it uh, based off what is in your output. I think it will just call it film underscore one or uh, it gives it a number order. So you will have to go through and rename those before you send them off to the editor. So there's a brief overview of my DaVinci Resolve 5.1 and 2.0 template. If you don't have the know-how or the time to make a template like this, as I said before, you can purchase it from noisypost.com.au forward slash shop or in the link in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video or learned something today, please hit that like button. And if you're not already, subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye.